It was January 2024. I set out to develop a multiplayer PvP FPS in the Godot engine to prove that I am in fact a real game developer, since all the cool kids also make multiplayer games. Uh yeah, that didn't work out too well, but before we get to that, we first have to know how I even got here. One day in January, I decided it would be a good idea to develop a multiplayer first person shooter using Godot, since well, Godot is my engine of choice and I like multiplayer games. Knowing that it is at least possible to make a 3D multiplayer game in Godot, I search up the gigabrain phrase into YouTube, how to make multiplayer FPS in Godot, and behold, a tutorial by Devlog Logan that's only 45 minutes long and has beans in the thumbnail. I knew that this would be the start of something big, so after copying I mean following along with the tutorial, I had two beans, and those beans can see each other move around. I know, we are already in game of the year territory. The tutorial, being actually somewhat in depth, also teaches you how to make weapons, so I did some more following along. Usually whenever weapons are discussed in devlogs, the person making the devlog is like, we need to choose between ray casts and projectiles, and go on to ramble for three minutes about the downsides and benefits of each. But you see, I am no usual YouTuber. So instead of making a decision, I work smarter, not harder, and just followed the tutorial. During this time, I also found some weapon walls for free by Quaternius. Thank you, Quaternius. Very cool. Adding the weapons in, we now have a quintuple A game. Now give me $60. I'm only joking, but this is already shaping it to be pretty well, if I do say so myself, as a person who has not even written it in the original line of code yet. Let's change that. In the real world, when you pull the trigger on your pew stick and there's a round in the chamber, your gun goes pow pow, and that pow is a sound. So naturally, I must set out to do the same. How would one go about this very difficult problem that has challenged generations? All I do is when a player fires, it tells other players to play the audio source. And oh, would you look at that, there's more than one weapon sound. This is a totally efficient way to go about playing weapon sounds that I totally do not change later on. Other than this very high quality sound source from SnakeF8 on itch.io, there's nothing else laying you know that you have actually used your blaster. What else do guns in real life? That's right, you guessed it, they recoil. Recoil implementations in games is something that depends on the game you're making, but I'm a simple man, so instead of doing any fancy recoil patterns, I just apply rotation to the weapon and the camera based on a property I set myself. This is a quite simple system that with some tweaking honestly doesn't even look that bad and creates predictable results. I do change this later on so the player's rotated a bit to the side with each shot, and this rotation is random but still predictable enough to not be frustrating. Now, we truly do have a multiplayer PvP FPS, but it's kind of boring. There's not really much to do, and I keep it that way for about two months, where I do, which is basically nothing in that time span. But some notable things, since it would be very boring for me to just say I did nothing, is that I continue adding in more weapons, added night vision for whatever reason that totally isn't just a shader that gets applied to the screen. Read on the ready up area, actually that is quite notable. Insert transition word or phrase here. One of the design decisions that I actually did make and definitely not because I didn't know how to do what I wanted to is that I have a fully 3D lobby kind of area where you can get weapons and try out those weapons. Instead of having a matchmaking system that would be very complicated, I just have this ready up area and have the game be more come and go so you can load into a match, get a few kills, then leave without being committed to a team. I'm just not realizing how goofy this sounds, especially considering that you can come and go in basically every other non-competitive PS, such as Casual Counter-Strike or Team Deathmatch and COD. But we've already added this in, and I'm not going back because that'd be a cringe thing to do with me, and I'm no cringe person. Now that you know what was going through my head when I decided to keep the game boring for two months, let's actually talk about what I did to give the game an objective. During my very serious design phase, where I'm totally not copying other games, I figured that an interesting objective would be to capture a control point on the map. There is however one basic gimmick that makes this unlike any other domination mode you may be familiar with, and that is, if your team gets too many points from the control point, it will move to another predetermined location somewhere on the map. My thought process is that this will help solve the camping issue, since in order to get points you actually have to move, and will also set a better potential for things like flanking. You know, very advanced military tactics to spice up gameplay. And I do eventually end up doing exactly this, but there is one issue with this. Not so much this mechanic, but the game, and that is that the map can't support these supply points. So, after modeling a map in Blender, we now have room for at least two supply points. Now I can get to programming this feature. I'm not going to go into the implementation details of this feature, since, well, I'm not a nerd, but also isn't complicated enough to warrant me giving one of my very detailed technical explanations. After utilizing 110% of my brain, there's now actually a game. Awesome. Time for me to release it. 
but not so fast. There's still a lot of things that need to be added, such as a server browser, more maps, more weapons, better visuals, sounds, and a single player for all my homies that don't have friends or internet. Knowing that there is still a lot to be done, I set out on a great journey to complete this game. I go into a massive multiplayer level design rabbit hole where I do learn some things that I've never really thought about before. Some might say I broadened my horizons, and I do kind of feel that going down this rabbit hole did somewhat improve the levels I made, but not by a large enough margin to actually warrant the time I spent researching this information. And by researching, I mean refining my Google search, because that is easier than actually doing your own study and looking at maps that are already great and analyzing them to see what makes them good. That was a long sentence. Anyways, I have now bettered as a map builder, so, using my new skills, I built multiple maps, mostly just to pad out the available options, but three of these maps do actually turn out pretty acceptable, if I do say so myself. Continuing my journey to complete this game, I make a purchase. Two packs of weapon models and some extra stuff for a total of $10. With these newly found assets, I replaced the existing weapon models from Quaternius with these new models. The Quaternius weapons served me well, but there were not enough diversity in the pack for the amount of weapons I wanted in this game. I also found myself a free sound pack that contains hundreds of sounds, but I do think the legality of some of these sounds is questionable, as the asset page doesn't specify how they were made, if they were sourced, or even their license. But ignoring all these red flags, I add them in anyway. Sometime, I don't know exactly when, I found a player model, because in order to join the cool developer club, I have to have some real player models. I'm not saying that the beans aren't real player models, I'm just saying that they are not for the highest quality quintuple A game, such as this one. Because I have no idea what I'm doing, I don't give these guys animations, so the weapons are still floating in front of them. But an issue arises, how are you supposed to know who is on your team and who isn't? My solution to that was two things. The first one being that the two factions have different uniform colors, and the second being a floating text behind the player model that says what faction it belongs to. Crisis averted, we now have a very serious player models with proper threat identification. I like how this section start off with me saying I didn't do anything notable, then transitions into how I did a bunch of notable stuff. But compared to the amount of commits I made to this game's repo, this really is not that much. So what happened? Why did I do a bunch of useless stuff? Well, I think that this is due to multiple reasons. The first reason being that I had no overall design direction, so I would often just load up Godot, make changes or add something, then say I worked on it, even if what I did wasn't contributing to the game. And the other reason being that I wanted a very polished experience, and in turn I sacrificed time I could have spent working on more important things or making a design direction. What could one do with a half-finished, lacking design or interesting gameplay do? Well, that isn't much, and I have completely left the single player out in the rain, so that's what I changed to try to salvage this project. Now that I have at least a somewhat better design direction and an overall goal, I set out on a new journey to make an awesome single player first person shooter with a multiplayer if I can cram it in there. This new refined project will have a better architecture, more features, and more polished gameplay. But that's for the next episode, so if you're not subscribed already, be sure to do that and set notifications to all so you get notified when the next episode comes out. I kind of have a tendency to start devlog series and not finish them, but uh, I already have the script written for the next episode, so hopefully that isn't the case.